Oh no, that's big time boxing. A new season and a new era in boxing. Frank Bruno departs the throne. Long live the prince. He's been great for boxing. Everybody loves him. I love him. And he's from Britain. Everybody should be proud. But um, I know basically I've got my time to do. You know, I'm 22 years old. I'm young. I'm ambitious. Producing the goods. And obviously, I, in my mind, I'm carrying the torch for Britain, you know? And as soon as I get to the States, I'll be, uh, I'll be. So, and also live tonight from the Point Theatre here in Dublin, another of the world's top featherweights, Tom Boom Boom Johnson, a tenth defence of the IBF version of the crown for him against Ramon Guzman from Venezuela, and a third world title fight coming tonight, the WBA World Cruiserweight Champion, Nate Miller, defending here against his fellow American, James Heath. Good evening to you, great to be back with you for the new season, Nassim Mohammed has 5.30. A big white limo pulled into the car park here, and that's four hours before he's due to, really to get down to the main business of the evening. And let's have a little peek inside the dressing room. We have a fly on the wall camera for the new season, and this is the Prince live getting yeah. ready to go. Is it, yeah? Sorry, Steve. And he is looking very, very determined. Get Barry, for you, has the hype been justified so far about Prince Nassim Hamid? Well, on paper, this is the most difficult opponent he's fought so far, but in, in real terms, styles make fights and this guy will not prove very difficult for Naz. I do believe this could be a very early night for, for Naz and although this guy's got tremendous credentials could be a very early night if he nails him properly. He fights and throws punches from the most unusual angles, great balance and power. This is a definite step up in class and I think that he could, uh, he could really start showing uh, big things in America now. Steve, you work very hard to establish yourself at world level. Do you feel Hamid has got to take a step up well, this, this is a great chance for him to uh, showcase what he has to American uh, TV because Medina is well known in the States. Prince Nazim is not, so a good win for him tonight here will give him um, more coverage and, and get more attention from the American audience. So hopefully he does look well tonight and do his business. Funny you should say that, Steve. I, mean, I know how hard you work to establish yourself in the United States. The American media are here in force tonight to pass critical judgment. Our colleagues from the Showtime Network there covering the fight live for American television and across the media compound. Our own boys are here as well, Glenn McCrory, and alongside him. They're to try and counter-punch me, trying to outspeed me, trying to outthink me, stuff like that. He's gonna, be, he's gonna be out there to steal the title and try and survive and pinch the fight, in my eyes. Well, we'll see whether that is the strategy of Medina. He's not a man to be underestimated. Ooh, uh, past the field every day or whatever to my mates and say, I can't believe this, you know. I'm going to be world champion, I'm going to be mega rich. I only have positive people around me, I don't have negative people around me. I cannot be beat in the way, I'm, the way I am, the way I've been brought up, my religion, my self-belief. It was brilliant. It was a feeling as if, you know, what am I doing here? This is, this is not me. Let's get up and put him on out, as Muhammad Ali says. Never again, never again. That won't happen again. I wasn't comfortable with the situation. It might have looked all right, but end of the day, I wasn't comfortable. I wasn't myself. 
there's great fans out there and sending their letters in and saying basically you've done great for me you know I'm doing brilliant at school I've got that positive mental thinking you know and I'm out there to help and show people that I'm a genuine man when people speak to me in public they say you're a bit quiet aren't you and stuff like that you you're really relaxed aren't you and you come really across different on television no matter what I've got, what, um, how much I earn, the gym is the gym. It's in Sheffield, it's in Winkerbank. I'm down there every day. That's where I train, that's where I'm based. I ain't changing nothing. Now, I train sometimes at 3 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. I can get sparring partners, believe it or not. There was one from Japan the other day. I think, bloody hell, the world champions rang us up. <laughs> Brendan's just been brilliant all the way through. You've got to realise that he's been there from the age of seven. And I've turned around to Brendan from the start and said, there's no way that I'll ever leave you. He puts on the fights. He's got the buzz about him. He's young. The guy's just a brilliant promoter and a brilliant man. We've got a relationship like a father and son relationship. I'd love to box Wayne McCulloch. I'd take him completely out. Azuma Nelson. Uh, I don't care what he's done in the past. At the end of the day, he's a fighter. He's got two arms, two legs. He's got a, a nice chin that I can knock off. I will basically retire Barrera. I want Tom Boom Boom Johnson. I want the WBC belt, Espinosa, Wilfredo Vasquez. I'm going to clean up. There'll never, ever be another Ali. But there'll never, ever be a Prince Nassim. Check it. Advantage and a world-class pedigree. Let's take a look at him in action against IBF champion Boom Boom Johnson. You can see how Medina likes to dictate from the centre of the ring, trying to dominate from there after each exchange. But he's also a capable infighter with quick hands and the ability to evade opponents' blows at close range. Medina is not a particularly concussive puncher. His clean shots here didn't trouble Johnson, who has been knocked down frequently in recent fights. The Mexican has also defensive flaws, particularly at long range. Watch how he hangs his chin out. However, Medina does take punches well. Here, Boom Boom lands a solid right to the head. And look at how steady his legs are as he absorbs the blow. Medina has been known to cut and was lucky to sustain this gash above the eye in the dying seconds of the fight. But the Mexican is always in terrific shape and dominated the closing rounds against Johnson, scoring heavily and making the champion miss. Medina would be hoping to frustrate and confuse Naz over 12 rounds tonight and steal a points decision. We know Medina is a light puncher and is prone to cuts, but if he gets into the fight, his vast experience and awkward style could enable him to take the title of Naz because it's time to go to work. He's won 20 out of 22 inside the distance. The Prince believes he has the formula to get the job done quickly again tonight. I've worked out a certain, certain shots that basically when he's open, that I'm going to catch him clean. I don't want to catch him with any slippery shots or anything like that. I just want to catch him bang on clean, bang on the button. And I know if I do, he's going to drop, he's going to get knocked out. Please welcome tonight's challenger, the former two-time world champion from Mexico, introducing Manuel Medina. Complete with sombrero, Manuel Medina, the tough, experienced Mexican who's held two versions of the world featherweight title, arrives in the arena. He's had 59 fights, he's been a pro for 11 years, and in all that time, he's been stopped only twice, and then, he says, only by injuries. He's been in with all the top featherweights, and if Nassim Hamed can blast out this man, he really will prove himself, even to the doubting Thomases, as the most explosive puncher in the featherweight division. But Manuel Medina, I think, on paper anyway, represents the toughest test so far for Britain's young star. Agree, Glenn? Yes, very much so. A two-time world champion, very respectable, good boxer. 
very good credentials and he's been around the game very experienced and look at the uh, cuts man i don't know if he's got any uh, connections with scotland that's uh, chuck bodak very gallic look to his arrival top american Cuts man Chuck Bodak working in the corner with Manuel Medina, who is a very tough nut to crack. And now, ladies and gentlemen, making his way to the ring, here is the defending one of a kind WBO featherweight champion of the world, Prince Nasi. sedan chair just an ordinary dignified walk to the ring which many would say is exactly how it should be the young man from Sheffield again being watched by American TV tonight last time out they saw him flawed for the first time in his career their verdict exciting charismatic but not totally convincing will he convince them tonight well, I think he was convincing in the way he got up and dispatched with Alessia. That was what was convincing. He went down, but he got up, and that's the mark of a champion. And it has to be said that Prince Nassim Hamid is arriving here to a very mixed reaction from the Dublin crowd then. Yes, he is. There's a, a few boos and a few cheers, and it is quite a mixed reception. I think his arrogance does not go down with everybody. Some like it and some don't. Well, this could be the Eubank phenomenon revisited, couldn't it? A lot of people turned up to watch Eubank's fights in the fervent hope of seeing him put in his place. Well, they like that, all right. I think Frank Warren and Prince Nassim's answer to the mixed reaction would be, never mind all that, look at the box office takings. That's the tale of the tape. Medina is 29 now. Prince Nassim Hamid, much the younger man. Medina, look at that, with a big height and reach advantage. How significant might that be, I wonder? Fifty-nine fights for Medina. Very experienced at world championship level. He's much, much more experienced than Prince Nassim. But uh, look at Nat Hamid's knockout percentage, 90%. Only two men have gone the distance with him so far. The rules mandatory count, no standing eight. The three knockdown rule is in effect. Only the referee can stop it. And the bell will save a fighter only in the last round. Prince Nassim Hamed continues to go through his disco dancing routine. Did that knockdown last time suggest he has a weak chin, or did he really prove his quality by getting up and knocking out Daniel Alicia in the very next round? More answers coming up. Ladies and gentlemen. 
gentlemen in attendance, boxing fans joining us across the UK on Sky Sports and sports fans joining us around the world. We welcome you to the point in beautiful Dublin, Ireland for the featured attraction of the evening brought to you by Frank Warren's Sports Network and Don King Productions as sponsored by Adidas and MBC. This back coming away is sanctioned by the World Boxing Organization President Francisco Valcarcel, Supervisor at Ringside Nick Karasiotis, along with the Boxing Union of Ireland Chairman Nick Moore, President Mel Crystal. Our physicians at ringside, Jack Phillips and David O'Flaherty, timekeeper at the bell, also keeping count of the knockdowns, Dale Elliott. Introducing to you our judges scoring this bout from ringside, Stan Gallup, Mike Gliana, and Frank Skilbred. Introducing to you our referee in charge, we have Gino Rodriguez. All right, fans, here we go with our main event of the evening. And now, ladies and gentlemen in attendance and boxing fans joining us around the world, it's showtime. Introducing to you first the challenger on my left, fighting out of the red corner, wearing gold trunks with red trim, hailing from Tijuana, Baja California, Mexico. He weighed in at a ready eight stone, 13 and three quarter pounds, or 125 and three quarter US pounds. His record stands at 52 wins, seven losses, 23 wins coming by way of knockout. And dedicating his efforts to his Irish fans, tonight's challenger is attempting to earn his third world title. Please welcome the two-time featherweight champion of the world, introducing Manuel Manteca. the ring presenting the defending champion on my right fighting out of the blue corner wearing gold trunks black trim hailing from his hometown of Sheffield England and proudly representing his heritage of Yemen he weighed in at nine stone even or the featherweight limit of 126 US pounds he is undefeated in his campaign to the ring with 22 wins, no losses, 20 big wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making the third defense of his crown, here is one of boxing sensations, the colorful WBO featherweight champion of the world, introducing the one and only Prince Nasi Mohammed. Once again, a referee in charge, Gino Rodriguez. Okay, Nassim, I give you instructions. Manuel, the instructions. Protect yourself at all times, Nassim. Manuel, protege todo el tiempo. Obey my commands at all times. Manuel, obey the instructions todo el tiempo. Buena suerte, good luck. A leer on the face of Prince Nassim during those final instructions, but Medina, well, world-class men like Troy Dorsey, Steve Cruz, Tom Johnson, Juan John John Molina, Juan Polo Perez, Alejandro Gonzalez, Fabrice Benicio, and Lucito Espinosa. They couldn't stop Medina. Will Hamed do it? Slight delay as a bit of wire intrudes into the ring. Remember that the Prince was put on the floor by Daniel Alicia in his last fight. Tall, rangy Medina, not known as a big puncher, but awkward and busy and a proven world quality. He was a world champion as recently as last year. 29 now. Prince Nassim, 22. Thunderous puncher. Left hand there from that crazy, unusual angle from Prince Nassim that some other fighters never seem to dream of. He went for a really big left hand there. Hamid says he'll get this job done inside two rounds. And you wonder what Medina can make of this style of Hamid. It's 
It's a very unorthodox style. Gives all sorts of angles, often off balance. But wherever he is, he carries a good punch. But can he make it tell? Medina with fast hands as well. He's beaten some very, very good men. Gets him with a left to the body. Hasn't really found his timing as yet, Hamed. Quite confident look about Medina. But so there has been about some previous Hamed opponents, and then he's just taken them out with his power. Well, Medina not giving Hamed an easy target. He's keeping on the move, using his height, using his reach, just trying to get them quick punches in, having some success for Medina here. Medina got in with two head punches, and signs once again that Hamed is perhaps not quite as elusive as we've been used to seeing earlier on in his career. Medina, make no mistake, will have done his homework. The reach disadvantage for Hamed. He's got to kind of jump in with his punches to get there and land them. Medina got a pretty warm reception. A big left hand got in there from Hamed, and then a right, and Medina took those punches well. Reputation of being durable. He hasn't been stopped for seven years, Medina. And in all that time, or well, most of it anyway, he's been mixing with the top featherweights around. This is good tactics from Medina. He's given Hamed plenty of angles, making Hamed come to him and making Hamed miss quite badly at times. With right uppercut inside there from Hamed. Well, this could boil up into an interesting fight. Yeah, rather 600. Welcome back. Didn't have things all his own way in that opening round. Prince Nassim Hamed and chance between the rounds of Wayne McCulloch. The big Irish favourite, who is trying to get Hamed in the same ring. Here's the second round. Medina in the yellow and red. Very tall featherweight. In his 60th professional fight tonight. Medina landing a couple of punches here from long range. Just quick little short chops. Given Hamid plenty of movement. And when Hamid dives in, he's got to be careful that he's not caught by the counter punches from Medina. Medina is not noted as a heavy hitter. He does have a tendency to cut up in his fights, though. I suppose one of the questions about Medina might be after so many fights in top class whether he isn't quite the fighter he used to be. Prince Nassim Hamed to finish off his opponents. He's won nine times in his career in this round. A good, good left hand landed there, but it was easily absorbed by this durable Mexican. Both of just looking for openings here, using their reflexes to avoid punches. Both look quick, both look sharp. Good left hand inside there, and again the right hand from Hamed. Gets through again, and once again, Medina just takes it, then doubles up on the jab. Better stuff, better timing now from Hamid in the second round. Yes, he's not trying so hard, Hamid. He's just waiting a little bit more for Medina before he was really reaching and he was missing. Now he's, he's catching punches a lot better. There's a long way to go, but might this be the night when Hamid finds out that pure explosive power won't get every job done? When he might to go a longer route. Blood coming now from the nose of Medina. And a good right hand from Hamid, who's just beginning, you feel, to find his rhythm. It's taken him a bit of time. But that's often the way with him. And there's blood around the face of Medina. 
This is the round he predicted he'd win the left hand. Puts Medina down. Is he going to be able to get up from that? Yes, he does. Oh, he's all over the place. Very unsteady on his legs. It'll be a man as rear count. There's only 10 seconds left in the round. And the final foul can't come quick enough for Medina. Hamid looking to finish him off in round two. But I think the bell's going to come for the Mexican. Any second now, another right hand, another left hand. And Medina gets through. But Prince Nassim Hamed was so close to the second round victory that he predicted beforehand. He showed his skills there. He shows he has the power. Very quick reflexes. He just looked in that second round that he started to relax a little bit more, started to catch his punches get Medina more and more and then he leaps in this big left hand right on the top of the forehead and over Medina goes with Nazi putting so much into the punch there he follows over on top of him and it's the left hand and I thought he was going to squash him for a moment but it takes something to put Medina down but Hamid's power told yet again He is probably the hardest hitting featherweight in the world, Hamid. He hasn't won in the second, but might he do it in the third? Well, there was damage around the face, and Medina was starting to get hit more and more. And now Hamid has hurt him. This is a very proud warrior, this Mexican. He's had crises before. Good right hand. And Hamed took that well. And it still has to remember the quality of opposition that he's in with and not take any chances. Lunges rather there. Hamed didn't find the target. Pinks of cuts around the face already of Medina. chance of Wayne McCulloch coming up from the Irish fans and he I'm told has just arrived and is watching this also at ringside we have the former world heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson who's on holiday in Ireland the crowd are almost taunting Hamid might it be a motivating factor for him made to miss a lot, Hamed. The timing that was there in round two has suddenly deserted him in the third. This, this, this round he's gone looking for Medina a little bit more and the timing hasn't been there. I think he should just wait for Medina coming to him and then take him off. He's having to reach with the punches and almost lunge in with them. But that is largely because of the height and reach of this awkward Mexican. Medina keeping the target moving, lots of movement around the ring, in and out, just trying to stab with that long jab. Short little right hand from Medina, who doesn't look to have been overawed or phased in any way by the knockdown. He's just got up and got on with it. And the right hand seemed a good punch from Medina, just made Hamid think for a little while. Caught on the counter again. And the left hook again comes in from Hamed. Medina, though, hardly blinks as it lands. Hamed does know that he has the power to put this Mexican on the floor. Can he do it again? It has to concentrate more on the defence, being a little careless in there with Medina. Got through with the left hand. Good shot, that one. But a better round for Medina, that. And there's a big, big atmosphere here as Ernie Fossey works away in the corner. There is Wayne McCulloch. Another Irish world champion like Steve Collins is working with us tonight and big chance for him from the crowd they want to see 
Prince Nassim against Wayne McCulloch in the ring. But first, Hamid has the little matter of disposing of Manuel Medina. Left hand, just caught Hamid off balance. Sometimes his balance isn't everything it should be. Hamid, that works for him sometimes when he's throwing punches from odd angles, but defensively, it could catch him out. That's right, sometimes it goes against him. He lunges in and he doesn't seem to have his eyes on his opponent. He's trying to get so much power in his punches, he's wide open at times. This may well be the most instructive fight yet in assessing Hamid's true abilities at the top level. Caught with the right hand, left his chin out to dry a bit. And against a heavier hitter, he would not be able to take that kind of liberty. What would an Azuma Nelson have done there? Well, you can see Medina really up for this fight. Using the ring very well, in and out. Sharp shooting punches. So workman like Medina, and all the time Hamed looking for angles to explode those heavier shots of his. And Hamed just a bit too relaxed, just not getting his punches off. Medina's movement certainly giving him problems. Scheduled to go 12 rounds, and Prince Nassim Hamed has only gone that route once against. Vincenzo Belcastro when he won the European Championship. Well, that was 12 easy pace rounds as far as he was concerned. Caught by a big right counter that time was Hamed. And once again, you ask the question, if that was a heavier puncher, and once again, he gets through with right hands. He's getting caught too much. His own timing is a bit awry, Hamed. And there are one or two little danger signals flashing here at the moment for him. Is certainly getting caught with too many punches in this round. His balance is bad, his defences are right off. Medina is quite mobile and elusive himself. His lateral movement is good. And if Hamid lunges and makes a mistake, the Mexican rams in the counter. Well, very, very interesting indeed, this. Again, missed by a mile and looked disorganized, but not punished by the Cadillac. Right hand and left go through from Medina. And Hamid's defense looks very shoddy indeed in this round. That was Medina's round. Fight for the WBO Featherweight Championship in which Manuel Medina is giving Prince Nassim Hamid the biggest problems, I would say, of his professional career aside from the knockdown by Daniel Alicia. He really is, these long rangey shots. He's out of distance and then he's really stretching in Medina and it's a very good performance and certainly a good winning round for him there. And we saw Frank Warren during the round got up and he was shouting instructions to Hamed. So I think there's a, a little bit of concern in the corner. Fifth round. Hamed again. Looking to detonate the power. Medina, in round four, landed 32 punches to Hamed seven, according to our computer printout. Again, Hamed just lunges forward, and really he needs more behind that. He needs to use his jab. He's just looking for the long shot from distance, and Medina's just too slick for that. Well, if Hamed does get out of this with a victory. I think Medina has already showed the camp that there's a lot of things they'll need to work on if he's going to continue to operate among the elite featherweights. You have to say as well, at this point in the contest, there's a real danger that Hamed could be beaten. Yes, certainly Medina is right in there, doing very good. Certainly won the last round well. Certainly looks very composed at the moment, Medina. 
Mohamed's best hope, you feel, in the exchanges is to again land a punch that can put Medina on the floor, which he is capable of, we know. But in the general action, in this phase of the fight, Medina looks the boss. Yes, again, he's getting the better of this round. Good, long punches. But it's the good movement from Medina that's causing Hamid all sorts of problems. Good lateral movement, presenting the mobile target. Trying not to let Hamid get set. The big man from Tijuana. Certainly big for a featherweight anyway. Hamid, that's better from him there. A rare combination gets through. Now there are a few red lights flashing in the Alicia fight. And that impression has rather been confirmed as Hamid has moved significantly up in class here to take on this former two-time world champion, Medina. And again, so many times he's lunging in, Hamed, and made to miss. Welcome back. Well, there are problems here for Nassim Hamed. Big problems. You see, he's lunging, he's frustrated because he's been made to miss so much, and he's getting hit with punches. And this is a good performance from Medina, really got his boxing together. Well, can Prince Nassim Hamed find some answers? Sixth round. Long way to go. And McCrory has Hamid ahead by one point. I've got Medina ahead by one point at this stage, even with the 10 8 round for Hamid in round two. We scored the third differently. That's the explanation there. Just the three judges are the only ones that count. How are they seeing things? And now Medina's starting to get cocky. He's starting to drop the hands. He's obviously growing in confidence here. Medina can sometimes be drawn into a battle, but he would probably be well advised to keep it at range. There he is again, picking off Hamed. Outboxing him at the moment. Lunging in, getting in with his shots, getting away again. And when he's at range, lots of side-to-side -side movement. That's better from Hamed. Crisper kind of shot that time. Because he started and tried just to put a couple together there. Too many single shots from Hamed. He needs to start throwing more. But again, good little punch from Medina. He's just keeping busy. Not allowing Hamid to get set. There's something else here, Glenn, as well. A factor that has rarely come into play with Hamid this far in his career. What's his stamina like? He just seemed to lose his balance momentarily as that left hook came in as well. I don't know whether the legs stiffened a bit. Found a good right hand himself, Hamid. He hasn't certainly been 12 hard rounds, has he? Any time. He hasn't, but... One of the things he's never been made to miss as he is there, he's going to get frustrated. And if he starts getting frustrated, he's really, that's what he normally does to his opponents. Medina felt that the heads came pretty close together there. Just gave a little glance to the referee. Again, catches him and jolts Hamid's head with the jab, and now the referee is taking a look at the cuts around Medina's eyes which don't appear to me to be appreciably worse than they were any earlier in the fight well this is a bit odd, there was a headbutt a headbutt the referee is indicating now has he deducted a point at all here no point deducted I think the referee just indicating that there was an accidental clash of heads. A 
slightly better there from Hamed. Just getting a little bit closer to Medina, who now does have a bit of cuts damage. How serious, it's hard to see. But uh, cuts have been a problem for him in the past. Indeed, he says his only two defeats, uh, two stoppage defeats, that is, were as a result of cuts. Let's have a look at, uh, the, we can only see the left eye there, but I think the damage is on to the other eye, which we can't get a good glimpse of, really, from that angle. It's certainly due in the action, it didn't look to get much worse. Chuck Bodak working in the corner, one of the best cutsmen around. So there's some damage by both eyes, and I think the right eye might be the worse. He does have very heavy eyelids, and it's difficult to see whether there's a cut deep under the eye. Because of that accidental clash of heads, if the fight had to be stopped because of that cut, now it would mean they would go to the scorecards, and whoever was leading at the time would be the winner. It's getting wrong there for a little back slap from Hamed. Getting close on a good right hand, got through there. Medina now finding it harder to keep Hamed at range. And Hamed trying to set himself here, trying to close the gap in the, in the feet and really trying to land some heavy punches. And now I think we're into a slightly different phase of the fight where Prince Nassim Hamed is standing almost toe-to-toe -to -toe with Medina and when he does that he looks much much more dangerous than when he's lunging and when his timing was so awry Medina just getting out a little slow now and how it's landing more punches there's no doubt about it Nassim Hamed went through a pretty dodgy spell around the fourth and fifth rounds when he was being outboxed but here there could be another little twist in the plot oh crunching right uppercut from Hamed followed it with a left hand too he's looking more impressive now and this is better but Medina coming back with a good right hand of his own but he's beginning to set himself for these shots Hamed now there was a right hand as well He's making Medina miss almost arrogantly, swaying out of the way of the Medina is cut. That isn't helping his cause any either. Good right hands from Medina. He's landing more and more. And they're both prepared to trade now. Both looking a little more weary in this seventh round, but Hamed has been doing much the more impressive work in this round for my money. Quality shots, and most of them seem to have come from him. There's less of the lunging now, the timing looks a bit better, Glenn. It's a little bit better, he's starting to put more punches together and he's getting more success, but I think Medina's just starting to tire a little. He's not moving as well as he was in the early rounds. He's always so cocksure, Nassim Hamid, and that's very good combination punching from him. Two lefts to the body, another right. Hamed is getting on top. A left hand, and Medina thought for a moment he was going to go down, but the open back to the point in Dublin. One of the hardest fights of Prince Nassim Hamed's career. But he's had a very big seventh round. And is that the pivotal round? I wonder, Glenn. I think it could well be. He's looking very tight, starting to get called with more and more punches, Medina. And Hamed just starting to get a little bit more confidence. He's closing the distance on Medina and he's starting to land more and more. At the moment, there's a look on Hamed's face which almost seems to say, Well, what were you worried about a couple of rounds ago? I knew I always had it under control, but has he? Will Medina come back again? It's just worth making the point again as Medican tries to come back. Good punch from Medina. He's a man who's often come through these difficult patches. 
every now and again he just drops his hands out and gets caught and his head's really made to rock about Medina's eyes seem to be just closing up a little bit from the cuts damage oh right hand from Medina was a big shot but he's not the most concussive of punches Nassim was able to absorb it but worrying the way he was caught by that and again with the right hand He's prepared to walk through those, I think, to try and finish the job here, Hamid. <laughs> Hamid can't afford to take liberties. He's looking wild again in this round. Some, somehow that control that was there in the seventh round has deserted him. Because again, he's just trying to load up for the big punch too much. And that's when the speed of Medina just picks him off. Medina really landed with two cracking right hands. Good left hand though from Hamid on the counter there too. Much more even this round. Good jab from Medina, just knocked the, the gum shield almost out. Not sure if it did actually come out, I think. No, it just, it just it came out and he, he flicked it back in, but it was a good solid jab. Fascinating fight, another... Just a little swing in the mood again in this round with Medina coming back again. This is a man whose spirit is almost impossible to tame, Medina. Again, the long right hand just rocks the head back. Medina, who first became a world champion back in 1991 against Troy Dorsey. four defences of the IBF title, then won the WBC title last year before losing that to Luisito Espinosa. Get off balance again. Oh, right hand knocks Hamid's gum shield out. He smiles, a rather silly smile at Medina. Bit unsteady on his legs again, a little half smile plays across the lips of Hamid as if to say, not in trouble, but there's a lull in the action. And... They will have to put the gum shield back in. Well, it didn't seem a, a good time to do it when Medina was in good control there. He'd rocked the head back of Hammond a couple of times and there was a few danger signals. I think the referee certainly did Hammond a favour there. Most and definitely. And there comes the bell to end the round. It was not a natural lull in the action. You're right. He most definitely did Hammond a, a big favour there because he, he'd been hurt, his hands were down. There's a, a, again a few danger signs in the... The Hamid corner. Yeah, a long right hand, rocks the head back. Similar to the first right hand that Al see it through, but he didn't get the second right hand on Medina. And you see the gum shield come out. Look at that as it landed. Now, if Azuma Nelson had landed that punch, or Marco Antonio Barrera, I'm not saying it would spell curtains for Nassim Hamed, but he would be in a lot, lot worse shape than fighting a light puncher like Manuel Medina. It's tightish, but Hamed has the home advantage. I wonder whether the, the judges might just be seeing things his way a bit. What do you think, Glenn? Well, it, it certainly, it's certainly, it's right there on the fence, but going by the last round, that was Medina's round, and he's looking good, and Hamed's getting hit more and more. Pretty close at the moment. Yes, I think I have a toys dead level. Medina having more success with the landed punches in the fight so far, according to the computer. It's the World Featherweight Championship as recognized by the World Boxing Organization. Glenn has it even at the moment, and a right hand from Hamid has Medina down in the ninth round. Medina nods to his corner, he says he's all right, he's got to get up though, before the count gets to 10, he just about made that, there can't have been a lot in it, can have it finish it here, another right, and a left hook, can he become the first man to stop this tough Mexican in seven years? Medina's almost fighting on instinct at the moment. Hamid still looks fresh. 
left hand, and that is not a knockdown. That was only, uh, but it was a kind of half push, half slip. Mohamed really looking to load up again. He lunges, but there's still plenty in Medina's head. He, he managed to avoid that punch. But that knockdown will have certainly swung things back Hamid's way. And there have been times here when Medina seems to have been teetering on the brink of defeat. Oh, he gets through with a shot of his own again. It rocked Hamid's head back on his shoulders. And the warnings Hamid's had about keeping his gun shield uh, hands low. Sometimes counting against him and again he found the right hand there. Second time in the round that Medina has been down. And remember the three knockdown rule is in effect. So one more knockdown in this round by Prince Nassim Hamid will give him this fight. And someone in Medina's corner was up trying to wave it over there but he's, he's sat back down. Really going for it now here Hamid. Another left. How did Medina take that without going down? Hamid's power has been the difference here. There have been times when Medina's certainly outboxed him and caught him with some big shots. Two more right hands. Caught again with a left and another right, but Medina will not go down for the third time in the round. And there are, what, just ten seconds left. He's rocked yet again. Somehow, somehow he stays on his feet. He will not buckle this Mexican. How has he got through this? Unbelievable stuff from Medina to survive that round. Now you know why the world-class men couldn't stop him. But he shook his head as he went back there. He took a lot of solid punches. At one point, it looked as if the corner was going to wave it off. But he, he survived it all. And even during that point, he still managed to land some good punches, Medina. He landed two good ones first, and then Hamid caught him and put him down. There's the long right hand. He just leans out of distance, Hamid, just as he's reaching round Medina, a long straight right hand. The second knockdown, he's made to miss Medina. He doesn't go down as heavily there, just a, a short countering punch from Hamid. <laughs> It's already the second longest fight of Prince Nassim Hamid's career as they come out for round 10, due to go 12. And that last round was such a big round for Prince Nassim Hamid that it will have given him a fairly useful lead, I'm sure, now on the scorecards. Big, big test. Medina switching from South Court to Orthodox momentarily and back again. Again, yeah. looking vulnerable to those right hands. He used the long right hand has been a good punch for Medina. Has continuously knocked Hamad's head back. Good shocking right hand there from Hamad. Such resilience from Medina. But you do have to take your hats off again to the sheer concussive power of Hamed punching his hand speed. But there have been big defensive shortcomings about his performance tonight. And against other opponents, he might pay for those more dearly. Again, the good long right hand from Medina. Oh, left hook from Medina. Looked wide open to it. Good left hook, though, got through again from Hamid. Just got a bit wild in the ensuing follow-up action. Hamid is, must be wondering how Medina is still there in front of him, but he is. What a good fight as well, Glenn. And an absolute thriller. Medina's landed good punches throughout, but Hamid, the more powerful punch, it just keeps getting the better of it. 
cracking right hand from Hamid as well. He's beginning to, well, he's certainly finding the timing of his own punches now, but he's leaving himself open for so many in this fight that it's worrying, really. Breathing heavily, Hamid. Remember, he does no road work at all. He spurns that conventional wisdom of boxing training. Some have wondered whether that might catch up with him one day in a long fight. Good jabs. Good points going. Punches from Medina and rocks the head back again of Hamid. Now I ask you, who want to miss all this? Welcome back to this uh, fascinating fight in which Nassim Hamid is being caught by far too many punches, but his own power is proving the decisive factor. It's the knockdowns that have got Hamid weeping out in front. That's right, but I think only just in front, and it's good work, them long punches from Medina that's just keeping him in this fight. Good scoring punches and rocking the head back of Hamid. He's been caught so much in this fight. This is the 11th round. Only the second time in his life that Hamid has been this far. The other time was against Vincenzo Belcastro. That wasn't nearly as tight and arduous a fight as this one for Hamid. This is a fight that's really asking the questions of his stamina. A fight in which he's been caught by a lot of punches. So open, those hands. Well, I think he may well have to try to modify his style to get those gloves up a wee bit more. They have to work on the defence. Otherwise, his days as a world-class fighter might be severely limited. And also, he has to get the chin down. He has his chin very, very high. And Medina has found it time and time again. Again, Medina doing more work with the jab. Medina's held two versions of the World Featherweight title. He wants a third one here. But he certainly has it to do here in the penultimate round. The knockdowns have just pulled Hamid away a little bit, certainly on Glenn and I's scorecard. Another left hand again from an angle that Medina just was not expecting. Definitely the toughest fight of Hamid's career this 23rd one and the victory far from assured even now and Hamid missing badly there you can see how tight he is right hand gets through nearly went down Medina his legs buckled he nearly touched down but somehow he absorbed it and got up again he's on shaky legs now Medina good punches from Hamid what an amazing fighter this Medina is though isn't he Hamid's really got him going again now. But his head seems to clear so quickly, almost instantaneously. Well, we said how durable Medina was. He's really living up to that. But Hamid, much the better work at the end of this round. Hamid, who describes his power as a God-given talent looking almost bemused that Medina is still in front of him. Medina has been retired by his corner and Prince Nassim Hamed has stopped him. The first man to stop Medina in seven years and 27 fights. Hamed retains his title after a very, very, very tough fight indeed. But in the end, his power told. Yes, I think that was the difference in the fight. Medina had the skills, that Medina had the head for the job, good boxing from him, but the power of Hamed was always the, the different factor. He just hit too hard for Medina, and finally he just wore him down. But a, a very good performance for Medina, very tough man. But Hamed, it showed how many faults he has. He 
chin was too high, his hands were too low, and time and time again he was caught. But he has prevailed, and he's done what a lot of other top men couldn't do, and stop Medina. But there are plenty of things for them to work on if he is to carry on in this uh, elite level in the world featherweight division. Prince Nassim Hamed, the 22-year-old from Sheffield, retains the title, but that doesn't begin to tell you the story of a very demanding fight. Back to you, Paul. Thanks very much to Glenn McCroy and Ian Dara. They have uh, witnessed with us tonight on Sky Sports 1 a very tense and demanding occasion for Nassim Hamed. But it's still his title. Here's Jimmy Lennon once more. Ladies and gentlemen, this bout has been stopped by our referee in charge, Gino Rodriguez, at the end of round number 11. In order to protect Medina from suffering further punishment, he's the winner by way of technical knockout, still undefeated, still WBO featherweight champion of the world, Prince Nasi Mohammed. Only two men had lasted beyond six rounds before tonight against Nassim Hamid. Manuel Medina is getting a fabulous reception here for his spirited resistance. It didn't quite take him the distance. There were moments when it looked like Medina could possibly score a major boxing upset in world terms here tonight. It wasn't quite to be for Medina, but we won't forget him in a hurry. He may be slightly over the top in terms of achievement in his career, but he is still a genuine world-rated fighter. That much is clear. Barry McGuigan's watched it breathlessly with us tonight. How close a call for him? I think uh, ultimately a great result for him. One stopped the guy he'd never been stopped before. Even John John Molina, the great super featherweight, couldn't finish him. So great results. However, um, uh, the, the fight was punctuated with big lunges and misses by Hamid keeping his chin up in the air and uh, you know missing wildly and he's a lot of work to do in the gym he needs a lot of a lot of training and honing to to make him the complete uh, package thanks barry we'll look at some of the action from the fight again in a moment or two but let's get a word with the man himself with ian dar i don't think he's quite ready he's down there somewhere in the scrum and ian's trying to grab his attention now they're ready. Well, here is Prince Nassim Hamid. Uh, how satisfying a night's work was that? Because it looked like your most demanding fight. Yeah, well, it's a very good fight for me because he's a very good opponent. You know, I proved myself at the end of the day. I mean, uh, I return here and I'll box Wayne McCulloch. They can shout as long as they want for him because I'm going to knock his spark out. You know? I'm going to do it, believe me. He's not like, he won't fight any fighters like this. You know? I'll fight him and I'll fight any of them. All I'm saying is, end of the day, a W is a W, I'm a winner. Um, no excuses at all. Bad call before the fight, but I ain't got no excuses at the end of the day. Manuel Medina is a great, great fighter. Two world titles, you know. I proved myself. He's a good fighter, and I took him, and I beat him. End of the day, I split his eye with a good, very, very good shots. He hadn't been stopped for seven years. You're the first man to do that, and he's been fighting world-class featherweights all the way. I mean, you saw it for yourself. How many times did I put him down? I'm not making no excuses whatsoever, but I have a very, very bad cold before the fight. But at uh, the end of the day, no excuses, because the W is a W. I'm still champion of the world, and I'll still beat Wayne McCullough, Azum Nelson, all of them. Were you alarmed? Were you alarmed, though, Naz, by the amount of times that he was catching you with those right hands? There did seem to be some defensive shortcomings to work on. End of the day, he caught me some good shots. He's a world-class fighter, but you saw it for yourself. How many times did I put him down? Does he normally get put down like that? No. The difference was the power and the knockdowns, really, wasn't it? Because it was a tight fight apart from that, didn't you think? Believe me, if my, basically, if I, was fi uh, if I was feeling perfectly fine before the fight, I took it for the simple reason I want to prove myself and not pull out at the last minute with a chest, chest infection and a cold, but I've got no problem whatsoever. Are you saying that you weren't really fit tonight? No, I was very, very fit, but I got a cold four or five days before the fight, but I'm a champion, you know? I want to give him the chance. I don't, I don't back down from any fights. Whatever's wrong with me, I want to get in and prove myself. 
You've said many times that you want to go on to be a legend. There's been a lot of chanting from the crowd here tonight for you to fight against the local hero here, Wayne McCulloch. Now, is that going to happen? Of course it's going to happen. Wayne McCulloch's got a box, basically. As soon as Frank Warren steps in there and makes a fight, because at the end of the day, he's hiding in Las Vegas. Look where I am, I'm in his hometown. Frank Warren will tell you, basically, that I'll box him any time. So we, uh, we hope that fight might happen. Thanks very much, Naz. Let's turn to Frank Warren. Frank, um, by local demand, it almost seems to be they want to see Nassim, Nassim Hamid against Wayne McCulloch. Now, uh, you're the kind of man who can make these things happen. What do you think? Uh, uh, just ask everybody. Well, if we, could just, if we could just have a bit of silence, maybe we can hear Frank Warren's answer here. Frank. Wayne McCullough, in front of all the Irish journalists, and Wayne sitting over there and he can't deny it, accepted a million dollars to fight Wayne, to fight Nassim Hamid, to fight the Prince here in Ireland. He's accepted it, and I hope he doesn't go back on his word. And is that fight, is that fight, do you think, going, going to happen, or is it just so much speculation? Wayne McCulloch has a piece of paper which he asked for off me. I gave it to him in front of all the Irish journalists who will confirm that. He's accepted the fight. The only way the fight won't go on is if he reneges on what he said he would do in front of at least 10 journalists. When could we see that? He can have it when he likes. Thanks a lot. That's the uh, news from ringside. Don't you just love boxing? <laughs> yeah. Steve Collins and Barry McGuigan. Gotta beat him. He's champion. No one knows him. Nine Street knockout. We've had a great jab. We've had a great jab. Bruce Seldon. It's like a jackhammer. Always to the face. Bruce Seldon. No one knows him. Huh. A world featherweight title. The local fans here want Wayne McCulloch against Hamid. Let's have a word with the WBC World Bantamweight champion with Ian Dark. Yes, we've got uh, chaos and mayhem, really, at ringside here at the moment with all kinds of uh, matches being made. But here is Wayne McCulloch. The crowd have been chanting for you tonight. They're doing it again now. Now, maybe you'd like to tell us, first of all, what you thought of Prince Nassim Hamid's performance tonight. First of all, I'd like to say thanks to all the fans tonight for supporting me. And it will be a good fight when I fight Nassim, but tonight Nassim's performance was lackluster. I mean, it was, he, from the fifth round on, his tongue was hanging out. <laughs> and he, he, his condition wasn't good. The other guy was a strong fighter, and Nazim was depending too much on his big punch. If you two did fight, if it did happen, what do you think would happen? Well, I know I'm going to beat him. I already know that. I train hard for him. I've been waiting for the last year to fight him, and, and I want to just get along. In an ideal world, where and when do you want this fight? As soon as possible. But sooner rather than later, because the later it goes, he may get beat, because this guy tonight almost beat him. Frank Warren, we've heard here already, say that he has offered you a million dollars and you didn't really want to go and sign the piece of paper. What's your response to all that? Well, yesterday it was a million pounds, now it's a million dollars, so it's going, it's going down. And I talked to my manager today, Matt Tinley, and he said he'll be in New York on Tuesday and if Frank Warren wants to come over and talk to him in New York, he can come over and talk and do it like, do it like men, not in front of all the press for, for PR, do it like men. Wouldn't there be one problem with you fighting Prince Nassim Mohammed apart from everything else? You're a bantamweight and he's up at featherweight. Isn't there a bit of a weight problem for you there? Well, I've, I've actually, I've been a bantamweight on a featherweight's body for the last three years. I've been making bantamweight for six years. I'm five foot seven. You know, I've, I've got big shoulders. You know, I'm, I fought at 26 before, I fought at 22. And I have a higher, have a higher knockout percentage of the weight. So I'll be strong. Okay, Wayne, we, um, we kind of want this fight to happen. Do you think it will? It'll be great for the, the whole public, a great fight like this. This will be a fight, great fight. Now, Frank Warren is bursting to have a word here. Now, Frank, just tell us... Um, uh, no, let, me, let, me give you the you, let me tell you something. You, in, in your own town, at the Wayne, you came to the Wayne. We didn't ask you to come, you come along to the Wayne. And in front of all these Irish journalists, all standing there, you said you wanted a million dollars, and I wrote it out on a piece of paper and gave it to you, didn't I? Did I do that? Whatever. Did I do that? Whatever. Did I do it? Are you saying I didn't do it? Whatever. I did it, and you now are reneging on it. So if the fight don't go on, if the fight don't go on, you know why. I said yesterday that I um, told everybody you do. I says, give me the contract and I'll show it to my manager, my lawyer. I've, you said you want a million dollars, and that's what no, you asked for it from all these jobs. I didn't mention any money. Yes, I'll, you did. I'll fight Nazim any, okay. any place anymore. I'm going to be the referee here. We'll call this off for the moment. It may be a story that's resumed. He'll fight you in Ireland. He said he'll fight you in Ireland, in your backyard. Thanks again, the old
We can hear you, Frank. We get the message. It's all soap opera. We'll see what happens. I want to know from Steve Collins and Barry McGuigan before we go about the facts of tonight, nothing yeah. about the future. What does tonight tell you about Nassim Hamid? Steve, well, I think what happened tonight is probably the best thing to ever happen to Prince Nassim because uh, he will learn a lot from tonight. He fought a very experienced fighter. He got caught when he shouldn't have got caught, so there's a lot of lessons for him to learn tonight. And it, leader, it, it will improve him as a boxer. Fights like this are good. It's a good learning process. He fought a very experienced opponent. And he got caught, he made some mistakes, and he paid a price, and he will learn lessons from that, definitely. Thank you, Stephen. Barry, finally. Humiliating, deflating night for him, but uh, ultimately he won in style, and he stopped a guy that had never been stopped before, and on he goes, and he can only get better from experiences like this. Good start to the new season, wasn't it? Definitely. Great to have you back really on board, Barry. Really exciting and emotive stuff. And Steve, lovely of you to have joined us tonight great. in your hometown. It's so, so much well. easier to talk about fights than actually get in and fight. <laughs> <laughs> One other result here before we close. Uh, the uh, third world title fight on the bill here was the WBA World Cruiserweight title defence by uh, Nate Miller against James Heath.